This is Plant Society, our unit on materials. Continue, part two. The oldest textile material in the world was actually linen. Uh, linen it is from a pot flax plant. You can see that growing in the field right here. And uh, people learned early on that the plant could be crushed. Uh, the people learned that it could be laid by the riverbank and you could get nice large fibers and make clothing out of them. It's been found 8,000 years ago in Switzerland. Probably even before that in Egypt, uh, mummies were wrapped in linen. Um, it was seen as a symbol of light and purity. People learned early on that different techniques were utilized to get that fibers out of the flax plant. Uh, they didn't necessarily need chemicals like we might do nowadays, but what they learned is that they could use bacteria, they could use fungus. Uh, by cutting down the flax plant and laying it outside, uh, different bacteria, fungus would act upon it to get rid of the soft fibers. This could then be pressed and then uh, using machines, uh, large sections of this could be made into a textile. Uh, this was used in many different things besides clothing. Uh, but people learned that as they made paper where they would take uh, the different fibers uh, 90 degrees to each other and made multiple layers, they could do this even thicker and make uh, shielding. You can make armor. Some of the very first armor out there uh, was a mixture of leather or animal skins along with this linen. We've used it for many other things since then. Uh, we use it as part of our currency, 25% of it linen and 75% cotton. We use it for books, for paper. We use it for the outer part of books to protect uh, the, what's inside. Very popular nowadays is we use it to um, around pool cue wraps uh, because it takes away the, uh, the sweat. Denim, another very popular one was invented by Levi Strauss. He wanted to invent some clothing that was very strong, that could stand up to the rigors of the outdoor work. Uh, he was uh, made this from hemp. He took the fibers again and um, put them 90 degrees to each other. He also uh, used a blue dye and but part of it, as it was laying the fibers together, they left some white dyed uh, hemp in there also. So we now have the characteristic color of Levi's with a little bit of white in there along with the blue. Sisal um, was a plant growing in uh, around the equator. Uh, you see it's a very thick plant, uh, very sharp leaves. And people learned that again, there are several different fibers that could be developed here, and each grade could be used differently. The plant leaves had to be harvested first, and again, they were left on the ground, allowing Mother Nature to get rid of the softer fibers that were here. As these were dissolved, it was crushed, and each fiber was taken out. Some, the lowest grade, were used to make paper. Uh, the highest grades were used to make yarns, for example, for in your carpet. Because they can last longer than cotton, they can last longer than wool, uh, they were added to carpets because it made the carpet more resistant to wear and tear. Core, which is a, a huge one nowadays, uh, because of coconut. It is the coconut fiber. As you traveled through areas that had coconuts, you would find piles and piles of coconut shells. People harvested the, harvested the milk inside. They harvested the fiber that was inside. They ate part of it. The shells were uh, inedible. 
what we've learned now is that, again, we can crush them. We can allow chemicals to work on them. We can allow Mother Nature to work on them, and we get long, we can develop long fibers. This has become very big in our organic world nowadays because we can use this core for clothing. We can use it also for uh, farming. We've learned that we can take uh, the core extract and mix it in with dirt and have a very excellent growing uh, medium. Pineapple is another one uh, that you don't naturally imagine as being used for clothing, but in certain parts along the equator, wherever the pineapple is growing, you can, again, take the leaves, crushed leaves, allow Mother Nature to work on the leaves, Again, and you get these long, sturdy fibers. The best part of pineapple cloth is in the tropics. Uh, it is woven in a very loose fiber. So, for example, uh, in the Philippines, you develop shirts that are like this, that are very, very airy shirts. They allow uh, wind to be carried in. They are allowed um, uh, water from your body to be absorbed and then pulled off to be, to be a very cooling type shirt. Apoc uh, is from a, a, a big tree. And as you see there, we have these shells, which this very uh, soft material on the inside. The best part of this is that it is very light and very water resistant. And because of this, it was used in life vests uh, during the World Wars. It, and even nowadays, it is occasionally used in light vests. It's stuffed in there, water doesn't get into it for a long time, so you can have floating. It's very cheap, and many islands in the South Pacific were valued because of the kapok trees that they had there. Nowadays, we use it as stuffing for mattresses, pillows, uh, teddy bears, and we have found it makes a good organic uh, type of insulation. Rayon. Rayon we think of as a complete artificial fiber, but is actually part of uh, wood fiber. As the wood fiber is um, reduced, uh, we might see it actually as sawdust even. As you mix it with different chemicals, it'll form a fiber which is very soft. Many people think of it as a silk product. Uh, in Europe, actually, it was sold as a silk product called uh, vicose. Uh, just like silk, uh, it has these longer fibers, which are very soft. It has their weave together. You can see here the different bunches uh, going out there and under. You can form a very, very soft clothing product. Even bark was made into clothing years ago. Uh, they found that you could strip trees of their bark, you could treat them with Mother Nature, you could beat them, and you can form clothing from them. Uh, this is very distinctive in Hawaii, um, in other South Pacific islands. Uh, this picture actually shows clothing made from the bark of a mulberry trees. In Hawaii, each individual who makes this is known because as they beat this with certain instruments, it forms a very distinct pattern. And so people who make this are known for their patterns. It was almost like a copy right? One of the cheapest natural fibers out there is jute. Um, this grows six to eight feet long. Uh, very strong fibers, uh, very thick fibers which are fairly easy to get out. Uh, what we've learned is we can actually mix it with wood fibers and we can make an extremely strong material. You see this a lot in uh, packing for different vegetables. Um, it does allow air to go inside, so the vegetables do have some air passage, and yet this is strong enough to hold several of them together so that they can be transported. Uh, hemp is another 
methods out there. Uh, as we'll see in, uh, in other chapters, hemp is grown throughout every single continent except uh, Antarctica and the Arctic area. It's grown wild across uh, uh, the Americas. At one time, it was uh, easily seen in every single state that was out there. It makes an excellent product for clothing and rope. Um, it has a resurgence nowadays because it's so easy to grow. Uh, in other parts of the world, they're increasing, increasingly used in other, mixed with other products, uh, such as in plasters, different composites, because the fibers are strong enough to hold some of this composite together. It has also been used for the making of paper, even part of the American Constitution. Manila hemp is another type of plant. We actually from the leaves of the abaca, which is a relative banana. Be because the fibers were almost rough, uh, it was more used for rope. In the World Wars, uh, Japan wanted to conquer certain islands because of this type of abaca, uh, especially in World War I, where more reliance was given to heavy ropes. Ropes were needed for shipping. Uh, ropes were needed to um, pull up sails. Ropes were used to hold boats uh, at anchorage. And only certain Pacific Islands had these, which the Japanese wanted to uh, control. Wood and wood products. When we think about wood, we don't realize how much of it is used. It started a whole revolution again. How did we have shelter? What protected us from the elements? The original man had caves, but after that, we needed wood. Uh, wood is used throughout the world now. It's been the cause of many wars. Uh, perhaps the Revolutionary War uh, was started because of the need for wood uh, in Europe. One third of the earth is covered by forests. Um, we all talk now about uh, carbon and how do you store carbon, how this CO2 which is being released into the earth. Well, trees are one of the largest banks for storing the carbon. We're losing these forests though. In the United States there's a very active plan to keep the forest going. We replace every tree that is cut down with another tree. In Latin America, every tree is only replaced after 10 trees have been cut down, even less than in Africa. So we're losing our force. One of the things we talk about in sustainability is how to keep that forest going. It's a huge natural habitat for many animals and other plants. So we need to keep the forests going. We've been taking down trees for thousands of years. We've learned that trees can be divided into two types. Some trees are harder than others. That's where we get the idea of hardwood versus softwood. Usually the hardwood is from broadleaf trees, uh, such as oak trees or walnut trees. Soft trees, uh, the wood is softer, it's easy to cut, it's easier to mold. Uh, we see this usually from pine trees. There's overlap between all of this. Um, the most important thing is to realize that the softwood trees actually will grow a lot faster. So in our forests, we can have, we can plant softwoods easier and it's easier to replace them. Uh, one of the problems that happened um, in the old world is that the trees weren't replaced. So consequently, when the new world was discovered, the trees were cut down and then shipped back to Europe. One of the reasons for the Revolutionary War is that England wanted the best trees that were cut down for their naval vessels. 
it, it took 100, 100 trees to make a man of war. The hardwoods um, made most of the hulls, where the softwoods were terrific for the masts. The best masts were taken from Maine, and at that time, the uh, people living in America didn't want that to happen. They tried to hide the, the best trees. However, this was found out by the British, and an actual revolution was put down. This may have been one of the causes of the American Revolution. We, this gives you an idea of all the stuff that we can get from trees. Blocking is one of the first industries that we had in the United States. Remember, as we moved to get more and more lumber, it allowed us to move further and further to the west. That way there were untouched forests, so we could get larger trees. And because of this, we learned that we could float the trees on the rivers and get them back to the lumber mills. Lumber is used for many things besides building. We can make it to fuel. It kept us warm. We can take dyes from certain trees and use them for our clothing. One of our problems is that trees take a long time to grow. Uh, because of this, we had to devise techniques to allow us to utilize the best quality of trees combined with other trees. As I told you before, the softwoods like the pines will grow much faster. So we can take an oak tree, for example, cut one eighth of an inch off of it, and then bond it to a pine tree. This way we get the look of a hardwood with possibly a lesser cost and a more easily growing tree. Here are 12 different colors from trees as they're bonded. We see now that when people's new houses, they have uh, oak cabinets. What do they do for that cabinet? They take one eighth of an inch of oak, bond that to a pine tree. We have all these different colors. We can now afford to have ebony cabinets because, we're, again, we're only taking one eighth of this. This allows us to make cheaper wood. How do we make even cheaper wood? We can take this wood and bind it together with glue makes for a stronger, cheaper type wood again. The first engineer type of wood was plywood. You would take these thin sheets and then turn them 90 degrees to each other. And this would make them stronger and stronger. We have to rely upon the direction that the grain is going to. And this again will make the plywood stronger and stronger. We now have types of plywood like this that resist cracking, shrinking, twisting, and we can use this as high tensile beams, which are stronger than the individual pieces of wood themselves. We can even take nowadays uh, the sawdust from cutting down trees and bond it together with glue and make a similar type of wood. We can take this wood and make musical instruments. Uh, Stradivarius violins. This is a very expensive, uh, well-sounding type of violin that is hard to duplicate the exact quality. Turns out that when Stradivarius was making his violin, there's something called the Little Ice Age. The Little Ice Age was a period in time that the Earth's temperature dipped down. Possibly a combination of factors uh, having a volcano uh, going off in the uh, Pacific Ocean, which raised a lot of dust up into the sky. Perhaps the Gulf Stream shut down some, but this decreased uh, the temperature throughout the world. Uh, you saw that there were, uh, uh, and during the Revolutionary War, uh, a famous painting of Washington crossing the Delaware 
there was ice in the water. That doesn't happen. What happened in uh, Italy, where Stradivarius was making his violin, just changed the temperature, which changed the way that the pine trees were growing. This changed the rings that are in the tree, making them closer together. And because of this, the Stradivarius violins were somewhat different. The resin in the trees where the sap that was produced was a little different too because the temperature was different. This allowed for a, a different type of violin that is, we can't reproduce today. Resin is the material that comes out of the trees, the sap, in other words. As this sap is produced, sometimes insects will land on there. And this is a picture of a mosquito, which landed on the amber, was fossilized. It was kept there. Um, this allows us to trap insects. We can now look at them now and study them, uh, and perhaps even see their DNA to see how they've changed. Papyrus. Uh, we made early paper from this. We learned that we could crush the fibers again, lay them out 90 degrees apart, smash them together, put weight on them, and we can use them for writing. To this day, papyrus skulls that had been written by the Egyptians uh, several thousand years before Christ are still usable. Bamboo it is one of our best sustainable products that are out there. The bamboo grows in most parts of the world. Uh, the ba bamboo can be small and very large, up to 30 centimeters wide. They're almost like hollow tubes. They're very much like a grass, except they do have branches on them. Bamboos are unique that they flower at the same time throughout the world. Uh, this may be an evolutionary step to stop predators from eating their seeds. The best part about bamboo is that they grow so fast they can grow up to 40 inches a day. And because of this, this makes them a very sustainable product. Uh, they can be used um, to build many things. Uh, we find them uh, to make a bicycle out of them. Boats are made out of them. Furniture, scaffolding. Again, if they grow 40 inches a day, this can be utilized very easily. 